Millions of rounds are fired every year, but have you ever stopped to wonder what exactly goes into that tiny explosion? We're talking about ammunition, or more accurately, cartridges. They're mistakenly called bullets, but cartridges are each an explosion waiting to happen in a controlled way. So in today's video, let's talk about how ammo's made. A small rocket, that's essentially what a cartridge is. To build this rocket, manufacturers use a specific blend of materials, each chosen for its role in the performance and safety of the final product. The projectile itself, the bullet, is often made from a lead alloy. This material provides weight and affordability, making it a popular choice. Sometimes, for improved performance, a bullet might even be jacketed with copper. Then the body of the cartridge is called the case. These are typically made from strong and durable materials like brass, steel, or even aluminum. For shotgun shells, a lighter material is used. This means that it's mostly a plastic case attached to a metal base. These tiny components act as spark plugs, starting the explosive chain reaction within the cartridge. Then there's the primer. It's usually a metal cup filled with a very sensitive compound that ignites upon impact. The fuel for the small rocket is, of course, the propellant. Propellants can range from classic black powder to modern smokeless powders. There is so much variety now, but these carefully formulated mixtures all burn really fast. What this does is it creates expanding gases that push the bullet down the barrel. But speaking of bullets, how are they made? They might seem like simple lead slugs, but bullets come in different sizes and they're all designed for a specific purpose. For smaller calibers, like the Classic 22, manufacturers often use a cold forming process. A giant automated press precisely cuts and shapes lead wire into the desired bullet form. This high speed technique allows for mass production. For competition shooters, a more traditional method takes center stage, casting. Molten lead is poured into molds, creating the bullet shape before it's cooled and extracted. Both cold-formed and cast bullets can benefit from a copper upgrade. Through a process called plating, a thin layer of copper is applied to the bullet's exterior. The copper jacket does two things. First, it shields the lead core from rusting. Second, it creates a tougher surface that grips the spiral grooves inside the barrel. Those are called rifling. This rifling spins the bullet as it flies, which is super important for hitting your target exactly where you aim. And hey, the copper jacket also helps keep your gun clean after a lot of shooting. All right, let's talk about the cartridge case. This unassuming little brass cup is the base that holds the bullet. Even though it can be aluminum, steel, or even plastic, brass is king again. It's just easier to make and super tough. Now, the shape of the case depends on the gun it's going to be used in. Sheets of brass get squeezed and shaped by these tools called punches and dies. Each step refines the metal, making it deeper and forming the rim until it's the exact shape it needs to be. After they're trimmed and have a hole punch for the primer, the cases get a heat treatment. This makes the metal stronger. It's now ready to handle the pressure of firing. Some cases might get dipped in nickel too. This makes them even tougher, protects them from rust, and makes them look a bit cooler. Finally, each case gets its own little tattoo with info like the caliber, who made it, and other important stuff so we can track it if needed. Tucked inside the cartridge is the primer. It's basically the spark plug of the whole operation, setting off the chain reaction that launches the bullet. The primer itself is pretty simple, but it does a super important job with two key parts working together perfectly. The first part is the cup. It's usually made of soft copper or brass, and it's about the size of your pinky nail on a small pistol. Inside the small cup sits an even smaller amount of a super sensitive material called lead stiphnate. The second part is the anvil. This is a small triangular piece of metal inside the cup. The anvil provides a surface for the lead stiphnate to get struck against. When you pull the trigger, the firing pin in your gun smashes the primer. This hit crushes the middle of the cup, squeezing the lead stiphnate real hard against the anvil. The pressure makes the lead stiphnate explode, sending a tiny burst of flame through a special hole in the case. This flame then ignites the propellant or gunpowder. We've seen how they make the bullets, cases, primers, and propellants. Now, what about how these components come together to form a complete cartridge? The journey begins with some deep cleaning. 
The brass cases are polished by a vibrating bath of corn cobs and polishing compounds. This makes them smooth for the best performance possible. With the cases prepped, the real assembly magic happens. Each case goes through a special process to get it exactly the right size for firing. Next, a primer is carefully inserted into the case's designated spot. It needs to fit perfectly to avoid any problems feeding into the gun's magazine. While the primer is getting settled in, the case mouth gets stretched a little to make room for the bullet. Now comes a super important step, adding the gunpowder. We gotta measure this stuff exactly though, because any mistakes could be really dangerous. Time to seat the bullet. It gets placed snugly into the open end of the case with a special lube to help things go smoothly and prevent rust. To make sure everything fits together perfectly and is the right length, the bullet gets crimped into the case. Each piece needs to be fed in the right order and super precisely. Special tools called dies do this job, built to last and make tiny adjustments. Any mess-ups, like forgetting the primer or putting the bullet in wrong, could lead to problems or even a dangerous explosion. Finally, after all this careful work, the finished cartridges get packed up neatly, usually in boxes of 50. They're ready to head off to the shooting range or a responsible gun owner's collection. Making ammo isn't just about throwing some parts together. It's building something that works perfectly every single time. That's where quality control and some factory testing come in. Thousands of rounds from each batch get put to the test by the manufacturer themselves. They measure how accurate the bullet flies, how much pressure it builds when fired, and how fast it zooms down the barrel. And most importantly, how consistent all these things are across the entire batch. To get these super precise measurements, they use special high-tech guns with fancy electronics. Each batch of ammo also gets its own special code printed on the box. This code helps them keep track of everything. And in the very rare case there's a problem with a batch, they can easily recall and replace those specific rounds. Sure, bullets have been around for centuries, but that doesn't mean they're stuck in the past. Ammo's constantly adapting to meet the needs of different users. Thanks for joining us on this exploration of the world of ammo production. Remember, responsible gun ownership is important. Always handle firearms with care and follow all safety protocols. If you're interested in learning more about how objects are made, check out our channel.